Eight months ago, I embarked on this journey of creating my first ever mini documentary. And frankly speaking, I came into this project not knowing anything about how to make a documentary at all. I just knew that I had a story to tell and I wanted to use interview sound bites to get my point across. So this video is a combination of the behind the scenes look at how I created my 19 minute long mini documentary about programming and the advice slash tips that I wish I had when I started this project earlier this year. So the idea for this documentary came about in April this year when I was volunteering as a section leader for Stanford's Code in Place program. I was having all of these conversations about why programming is so useful with a bunch of people. And I thought to myself, hey, maybe I should do a video about this. And this idea felt like the perfect follow-up to my five-part video series that I released in late 2020 as part of Computer Science Education Week. Because one of the common criticisms that I received from those videos was that it was too technical and people that didn't know computer science or programming felt alienated whilst watching it. Which is a valid point because I developed the series as more of a self-reflection towards my experience and that is very much reflected in the script itself where I assumed that my viewers were familiar with the technical terms and understood the complexity of the computer science world. In essence, those videos were not understood by the target audience, which is individuals that have little to no knowledge about computer science and programming. So with the idea planted in my mind, my instincts told me that this documentary can't be another one of my videos where I'm just talking in front of the camera. I really needed to go out there and get the thoughts and opinions of others to paint a fuller picture of programming. And that's where the idea of filming interviews kind of came by. The plan was to get raw opinions about programming that people had in their minds and use that to tell a story that is both compelling and relatable to the average person. Typically, the production times for my YouTube videos is as little as a few days and goes up to three weeks. But with this project in particular, it was clear that I'm not going to be able to complete it in under three weeks since I was dealing with a lot of unknowns. So the first order of business was to come up with a production timeline that lasts through the week of December 5, 2021. And since I have never worked on such a large project before, I set the timeline based on some estimates that I found online. So for this project, I set aside 3 months for research, 2 months for production, and 3 months for post-production. And for the most part, I followed this timeline pretty religiously and the proof is in the pudding. I managed to get the final documentary out on time on December 6, 2021. From the very start, I knew that I wanted to tell a story about the importance of programming. But I didn't care to do any detailed research on this topic because I wanted to approach this story with an open mind. I didn't want to repeat things that are already mentioned on the internet, nor do I want to base my facts off a of confirmation bias. I truly wanted to hear what people had in their minds about programming, like how they see it, what kind of biases that they have, and why they think it's hard. So the bulk of my research was looking up guides on how to conduct sit-down interviews. More specifically, I wanted to learn how to ask questions that will yield a raw and authentic responses that I was looking for for this story. The two most useful resources that I found were Harvard Business Review's article on strategies of effective interviewing and Griffin Hammond's course on shooting documentary short films. And my big takeaway from all the research that I've done is that I need to get the interviewee as comfortable as possible and not to treat the interview like an interrogation, meaning that I should be flexible in the questions that I ask and go with the flow of the conversation. Here's the list of questions that I had with me during each interview. The idea with this list is not to go through every single question, but to use it as an outline to drive the conversation. There's quite a bit more to expand on this topic of interviewing others, so I'll be making a separate video to describe my process in greater detail. So get subscribed so you don't miss out on that video when it gets uploaded. For this documentary, I could have just taken the easy route and record interviews through a teleconferencing app like Zoom, but I didn't. I really wanted to challenge myself and film in-person interviews to not only increase the production value of this documentary, but also to bring my video production skills to the next level. And as you can see from the documentary itself, the quality of the interviews I filmed speaks for itself. But the thing is that when I started this project, I knew nothing about filming great looking interviews. In the past, I've only filmed three interviews and those three times the video ended up looking amateurish. So with that, I went on this rabbit hole of watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos about how to record multi-camera interviews, how to set up cinematic lighting, and how to record crisp and clear audio for sit-down interviews. Also, throughout this process, I spent quite a bit of time watching a bunch of videos here on YouTube about programming to see what I'm up against, and also a lot of documentaries on streaming platforms to see what kind of style slash tone that I could use for my own documentary. Watching all this content took the bulk of the three months of my research time that I set aside for this project, and that is because I was on this vicious cycle about watching all sorts of video tutorials and always feeling like I'm not ready yet. 
I only broke out of this cycle when one of my friends from out of town was here to visit and I wanted to interview her while she was in town so I really pushed myself to just go out there and film the interview. Based on the myriad of YouTube tutorials that I watched, I was convinced that for my interviews, I need to have a multi-camera setup, I need to record the interview with two microphones for redundancy, and I need to film the interviews in a log picture profile to get the most flexibility in post. And to top it all off, I needed to do all those things that I've never done before in someone else's home. So before I went out there and made a fool of myself, I needed to do some testing and rehearsals of my own. I set up several test interview setups at home to figure out the general workflow from setting up the lighting, to framing the two camera angles, to stitching the clips together in my video editor. And one of the final tests that I conducted was the chicken biryani recipe video that I shot several months back. That video used all the techniques that I was going to use for filming the interviews in this documentary. And once I was done with the testing, I ended up with a production checklist that included things that I needed to do before filming an interview, and also the list of gear that I need to pack for the interview. You know the funny thing about this documentary was the initial plan was only to interview like 5-6 to six people and the only reason why I ended up interviewing 17 people was that I reached out to people with the mindset that some of them would not be interested in participating in the project but to my surprise, almost everyone I talked to was interested in participating so that's how I ended up with a roster of 17 people. But while I did manage to convince many people to be interviewed, it wasn't the easiest thing to do. It was a nerve-wracking moment for me because I was genuinely afraid that people might think that this idea is dumb or just flat out reject my interview request. In reality, the concern that most people had was the vague description of the project that I provided. I basically told everyone that it was an interview about why you think programming is important and I straight up refused to provide any of the interview questions that I'll be asking because I want to hear what's actually in their mind and not hear what they managed to look up online. Also, the fact that I needed everyone to sign a talent release form did have some people rolling their eyes on what the hell I was actually doing. This was a particular concern for people that I wasn't really close with, but as a whole, the people that I reached out to fell into one of the three categories which are those that didn't know much about programming, those that had some hands-on experience with programming, and those that do programming for a living. Pick two. I filmed the first interview in July right here in my apartment and it took me about two and a half months to interview everyone. All the interviews were done during the weekend because most of them were filmed in the interviewee's home. This meant that I needed some buffer time before and after the 45 minute interview to set up and tear down the camera equipment. I decided to film the interviews in the interviewee's home to not only make the final video look less scripted, but also to get the interviewee as comfortable as possible since I was literally pointing two cameras and shining all sorts of lights at them. Adding to that, for a lot of people, this is their very first time talking to someone in front of a bunch of the camera equipment, so by having them in their home, they'll be a bit more calmer since it's a more familiar environment. But I have to say, most people were really surprised to see me on the day of the interview because I showed up at their home with literally a cart full of gear. When I was reaching out to people to get their permission to go to their homes to film, I failed to mention that I was also bringing a lot of camera gear with me. They probably thought it was just be a camera, tripod, and a microphone, but here I am carrying a bunch of lighting equipment, sound blankets, and camera stands into their homes. And I just told them to trust me and know that all the gear that I'm lugging into their home is so that I can get the best possible footage. And the final video speaks for itself. It looked and sounded amazing and the people that I interviewed agreed with me. Looking back at it now, producing these interviews was a big challenge not only because I had to physically carry pounds of camera equipment to someone else's home, but there was also this sense of uncertainty about whether the interviews would yield any results at all. But after the first interview, I was completely amazed and I said to myself, this is really happening, it's going to work. I was really getting excited and just remember, at that point, this whole idea of this documentary was literally just in my head and arguably still a pipe dream. But hearing the answers and talking to more people about it made it feel more real than ever. It was a really magical feeling for me and it got me real pumped for the final edit. The first step in post-production was to line up the audio and video files together so that I can properly review the footage that I recorded from all 17 interviews. This process was both exciting and nerve-wracking because it was time to see if the weeks that I spent on interviewing people was actually worth it. And since I had over 15 hours of footage to review, I spent a few weeks sitting on this table here, watching back each interview several times at 2x speed. The plan was to grab all the good responses from each interviews, 
put them into a timeline and group the similar interview sound bites together. That way, when I'm formulating the storyline, I can pick the most appropriate piece that matches what I'm talking about in the script. When I was doing this, I honestly didn't know if this was going to work. I only did this because it felt like the most logical way to break down and find a common theme that was shared amongst all 17 individuals that I interviewed. The script for this documentary is by far the hardest thing that I had to do for this project. This is where all the planning, research and interviews that I've done for this project so far will be glued together to become a cohesive story. And you know the funny thing that I kept telling myself is that the interviews that I'll be filming will narrow down the scope for the story. It really didn't because the questions that I was asking during the interviews were pretty broad. So the first thing I did was to create an outline for this documentary. I created it based on the three sections of questions that I asked people in the interviews. That is, what is programming, why it's important, and why beginners struggle with programming. With that in place, I started building mini segments from the interview sound bites I gathered earlier. I managed to piece together these segments pretty easily, but the hard part was really connecting these segments together. Throughout this whole process, I felt like I was overthinking it most of the time. I was writing the script with the mindset that people might click off the video if the section was too long-winded, or if the example that I mentioned wasn't relatable at all. Basically, I was worried that this video might not be watched or it might not appeal to the target audience which is individuals that have little to no knowledge of programming. But despite that, I pushed through it and continued iterating over the Word document for several weeks. At the same time, I was racking my brain over the intro section of this documentary. The intro is just one minute long, but this section is the one that I spend the most time on. That's because I knew that I needed to get the viewer's attention within that intro segment if I did not, people will very well just click off from the video and the remaining part of this video will be useless. Like initially, I was going to start off the video with the statement that programming wasn't always about writing English keywords. I spent a good 7 days reading up a document from the 1950s about the Flowmatic programming language and sifting through the interviews from Grace Hopper. But after iterating over several versions of that intro, I decided that it was too long-winded and those that don't have a technical background might feel alienated from it. In the end, I moved that part to the second segment of the video in an arguably more condensed version, and I moved the mashup of the interview sound bites, which was part of the first segment, to be an introduction for the documentary. Overall, coming up with this script felt like a nightmare, and I spent way too much time on it because I was obsessed with writing a perfect story. The original plan for this script was that I was going to go outside to like a park or grocery store and present the content in the script. But since I only completed the script at the start of November, I had no choice but to record voiceovers for it. After I finalized the script and recorded the voiceovers, editing was a rather frictionless process because a lot of the heavy lifting was already done when I was writing the script, so the script acted as sort of this template for the final edit. But it wasn't all smooth sailing because I still had to make some small adjustments here and there to the script whilst I was piecing together the footage and voiceovers, but even with that, I got everything pieced together in under 3 weeks, and that included overlaying stock footage. This is my first time using stock footage in a video, and it was a necessary thing to use because a major portion of the video is my voiceovers. I used storyblocks for stock footage, and finding appropriate stock footage was surprisingly challenging, mainly because a lot of the stock footage that was tagged with the term programming or coding displayed a very unrealistic view of coding. Like there were a lot of clips of people just typing a few keys on the keyboard and the screen would overflow with lines of code. That was clearly fake and BS which went against what I was promoting in this documentary which is that programming isn't all about the lines of code that is written on the screen. But anyway, towards the end of November, I had the final video all pieced together. I spent the last week or so that I had before the release to fine tune the sounds and visuals. That last week for me was really intense because I was watching the video from start to end at least 2 to 3 times a day. I was obsessing over the tiny details like the transition between the footage not being smooth or the background music being too quiet. These kind of details would not be noticed by someone that is watching the video for the very first time, but I just wanted it to be as perfect as possible. For this documentary, I spent quite a bit of time marketing it on my social platforms because it was something that I was really proud of. I want people to watch it and I knew that I couldn't rely on the organic viewership as I do with my usual YouTube videos. So my strategy was to slowly review more and more information about this project. This was both to drum up some hype, but it was mostly because I honestly didn't know what the final documentary will be titled. I only came up with the name What is Programming in the middle of November, which was 3 weeks away from the video's release. And the reason why it took that long was that I wanted to increase my odds with the YouTube algorithm 
So I spent a lot of time coming up with the title and thumbnail combination. And while the title What is Programming might sound super simple and all, but it was by no means easy to get to that title or like come up with that title. The number one thing I learned from making this documentary is how to organize a large video project like this. As I mentioned earlier, I've never done or ever made a documentary before. Everything I did in this project was exploratory. There wasn't a guide that told me exactly what I needed to do. Now, not everything in this project was picture perfect. Most evidently is that throughout the project, I was procrastinating for various reasons, like feeling afraid to actually conduct the interviews, or assuming that writing up the script would be an easy process. Part of this is largely due to the fact that this documentary is a passion project and I was only compelled to make progress on it when I was in the mood. I didn't have a producer that would chase me down if I was veering off schedule, so the December 5 deadline was really my biggest motivator. Adding to that, for some portions like the motion graphics or color grading, I could have done that in parallel whilst I was racking my head around coming up with the script, that could have saved me some time towards the end when I was rushing to get everything done. And another thing I learned is that previewing my drafts to others is a good way to keep my biases in check. Since I wanted this documentary to be understood by a wide audience, I showed different people various versions of the drafts throughout the editing process and got incremental feedback here and there. It was really nerve wracking because I was honestly afraid of hearing bad criticisms towards it, but thankfully the feedback that I received was for the most part constructive and it reassured to me that the content in the documentary will appeal to a wide audience. The last tip I have is to spread the time on reviewing the final video. As I mentioned, towards the release of the video, I was obsessing over the video and watching it multiple times a day, which blindsided me on noticing the flaws that a first-time viewer would experience. Like one flaw that exists in the final documentary today is that for some sections, I was speaking a little too fast and I didn't realize it because I was so used to the content so I didn't pick up on the very fast pacing on certain sections of the video. At the end of the day, this documentary has really pushed me beyond my limits. I can't count the number of times that I was doubting myself whether I could actually pull this off. What kept me moving forward was really the novelty of creating a documentary and this mindset of paying it forward and sharing my knowledge of programming. Creating this documentary has showed me that if you believe it can happen, it will happen. The eight months that I spent on this project involved a lot of uncertainty and stress but being able to come up with this 19 minute long documentary gave me a very strong sense of accomplishment. This project has undoubtedly accelerated my video production abilities and a lot of the techniques that I picked up for this documentary will trickle down to my upcoming YouTube videos. So if you haven't already, check out the full mini documentary right here on my YouTube channel. I hope that you learned something from this video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you very soon in the next video.